uh, any ETL kind of the tool, uh, probably you'd be uh, knowing about uh, the concept of the partition. Uh, to set the little context, uh, like you know, so suppose if I'm making use of uh, uh, any kind of the table, uh, assume that I'm uh, I'm working with some sort of the table where that particular table is uh, containing some information. Usually, uh, in terms of the ETL, uh, because now we are going to talk about the ETL kind of the partition and dynamic partition. Uh, especially guys, though we are working with these Spark kind of the technology, uh, it supports the SQL orientation, mm -hmm. it supports the ETL as a background, if you keenly observe. Uh, because most of the time, uh, Spark is focusing on the querying uh, rather than the programming, especially in our uh, uh, DE stream. Whereas in machine learning stream, uh, the aspect is little different, like it is providing some uh, ML lib, then you can work with the uh, classification and as well as the uh, regression kind of the task. Okay, classification and as well as the regression kind of the tasks. But now, uh, especially while talking about the partitioning and as well as the pruning kind of the mechanism, uh, the, the point is pretty simple, guys. Like, you know, suppose if I'm having some sort of the data, and if I want to perform some kind of the activities with the faster performance, because uh, every uh, programmer's uh, activity and every programmer likes to uh, have the appropriate information to process in the fastest manner. So in that particular case, what is the basis requirement? Suppose if I'm referencing the SQL orientation, especially either I can do with the data frame aspects, Okay, uh, uh, data frame is nothing but again a, a table kind of the structure which maintains the data in the row and uh, column wise fashion. Okay, on the other way, just uh, you can make use of this uh, data frame so as to create uh, or replace a temp view. Okay, just observe this. And you can create a view or a table or something like that. I'm, I'm creating some uh, orders table or Whichever. Now onwards, you can make use of this thing like, okay, so directly some spark.sql. Okay, just you can give the triple quotes. And here you can write whatever the query you want in the SQL format. And then just to give the show. Okay, so the point here is, guys, you need not be familiar always uh, either with the uh, Scala or with uh, Python. Or R or Java, even with the uh, uh, Spark SQL, okay, you can able to perform the activities. And and one more interesting idea here is uh, how your PySpark performs the activities with respect to the data frame. And uh, if you are using the SQL kind of the syntax in Spark, both time and other like uh, space requirements are same. There is no, uh, I mean, uh, uh, optimization by differentiation or performance lagging, nothing like that, guys. Okay, so just uh, whatever the aspects we're having in terms of the typical PySpark programming, the same kind of the aspects you can observe in the Spark SQL also. So the people who are having the background of SQL, they can straight away uh, make use of the convention so as to use the, the SQL kind of the queries, no matter whether there is a group by order by having class, all these kind of the things. And of course, in our course of study, uh, we are going to talk uh, those kind of things also. Once we'll see all the architectural kind of things, because 17 questions are from uh, architectural aspects, two or three questions are asking in partitions also. So once this is over, just we'll try to understand uh, reading and writing process, uh, and thereafter, uh, how to perform some filtering and working with the call, Okay, all these kind of the conventions will see. Uh, now, uh, just if you are referencing one more point, I'm uh, saying like extraction, transformation, and loading. So ETL, uh, the typical ETL example, guys, uh, Hive is one of the best tools. And of course, uh, if any member is from the data warehouse in uh, Informatica and Ebenezer, uh, data stage. Parallel jobs like that, we're having various tools. Okay, 
uh, in all these kind of the things, one commonality is that just I'm having some source data. Okay, so this is causing some trouble. Okay, so I'm having some kind of the source data and uh, okay, sorry. So if you are referencing the source data, this particular source data, according to the requirement, we are uh, extracting the data. And thereafter, just we are trying to load the appropriate data. Okay. And in between, you can perform whatever the transformations you want. Okay. So the transformation, uh, friends, here, uh, no, no matter whether you are using the ETL or uh, Spark orientation, it is uh, able to convert one form of the data or one kind of the data into another. Maybe in terms of uh, filtering the data, okay, or else group by options, uh, whichever the activities. So transforming the appropriate data according to the user needs. It is a simple background related to the ETL orientation because the entire uh, partition and understanding of this particular partition is uh, on top of the uh, ETL background only. So now, uh, however, if you remember, guys, long back we have seen that your Spark is uh, ma majorly dependent on two things. One is the Spark context, another is the Spark session. And, and if you consider the Spark context, of course, in Spark 1.0, uh, they are only uh, allowing the complete uh, uh, data frame orientation. Whereas uh, in this particular Spark 2.0, and as well as now we are in the Spark 3.0, of course, we are attempting that uh, 3.0 Databricks only. So from these kind of things, internally, what uh, this particular Spark session involves is we are having the Spark context and support of the Hive context. And then we are having the SQL context. So they realized that these two are playing a vital role, though uh, PySpark data frames and all these things are good, but still they don't want to miss out the approach of the ETL and as well as the SQL kind of the orientation. So uh, though you are not using the SQL or ETL directly in Spark 1.0, but you still realize and you can feel that uh, the way we are programming are definitely uh, pointing to this uh, SQL kind of the orientation frames. Okay, so uh, the point here is uh, in Spark 3.0. Okay, just we are having the orientation of this uh, ATL and all these uh, SQL kind of thing. Uh, and and of course in 3.0 they are become by default frames. Whereas in Spark 1.0 explicitly you have to mention Hive and SQL. But whereas in uh, 3.0 we are having uh, the specification for that. Okay, uh, in Spark session. By default, it is uh, involving or embedding the Spark context, Hive context, and SQL context. Okay, so just you observe the distinction. Maybe they are asking this thing also. Uh, sometimes they are giving some Hive or SQL kind of thing, and then ask you whether we can go ahead with Spark session or Spark context. Okay. Now, uh, if you try to understand how do I uh, create a partition and what exactly that thing. Now the uh, logic goes here, guys. Suppose uh, if I am uh, considering a partition, okay. Now if I am considering a table, no matter whether that is a hive or any any kind of the table, okay. So just maybe we are having some sort of the information, okay. So just we are having some uh, rows and columns data. So if there is any possibility of okay a partition which is nothing but composed of a subset of the rows in a table, okay. That share the same value for a predefined subset of the columns. Okay, so now uh, let me help you in this way. Uh, suppose assume that we are having the university data. Okay, and uh, uh, I want to store this uh, uh, NIT Calicut and uh, NIT Warangal and NIT K. Like that, I want to store some different categories of the uh, university's data. Maybe. Uh, uh, Databricks or Amazon or Facebook, they want to get the people from these NITs and they want to maintain that convention. Like, uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, if any person is having the mail ID of NITC, 
and he can log in and he can attempt the examination conducted by our company that maybe we are recruiting those guys so that that is one partition partition one and similarly if i want to get the people from nid bangalore and it is uh, like uh, another partition so what i mean to say is uh, rather than picking up the data as a whole automatically i can point to a particular condition okay so in that particular case i will be getting the corresponding rows and i am getting the column information also so in the entire table okay just uh, to notify these uh, subset of okay rows and columns okay so so as to point to uh, a particular requirement then i can say that as a partition i can say that as a partition suppose uh, best example guys like you know uh, generally wiki page counts would be there uh, this page view statistics uh, maybe we are having different countries us uk and india and i want to pick up only the page views by indian uh, audience okay uh, so uh, but if i am storing this particular data as an entire no without partition in us uk and india i need to verify all the records okay so the using the partitions the main advantage is guys we can speed up the queries reason is obvious rather than uh, accessing the entire data i can partition that particular data and uh, you can perform the uh, data manipulation in the easiest way so because uh, we are pretty know that uh, uh, this is these are all the partitions and uh, all these kind of the conventions uh, accordingly i can uh, maintain the manipulation in, in in terms of like uh, deletion i can delete that particular partition or i can insert uh, the data related to a particular partition one problem with uh, relational model friends if you observe as the number of records uh, grows automatically it is uh, affecting the access speed performance definitely affects guys okay so if you are uh, uh, coming to the appropriate uh, uh, information like uh, whatever the data i am having though uh, your your entire table might be having the uh, information uh, entire data but maybe uh, suppose if you want to access that particular data in the fastest manner uh though i am having multiple uh, data items with the help of the partition where there is a differentiation between multiple partition one can easily uh, handle that particular convention but practically how do i implement this because these things are uh, maybe in terms of uh, rdbms or in terms of hive now in terms of spark also we were talking about this uh, partition and logically this uh, this is uh, making sense guys like uh, rather than storing the data as a uh, as a kind of uh, without any separation uh, if i am having some um, million records so rather than that if i am separating according to my needs then i can pick up that particular data similarly one more example i can give so as to easily you can call um, like you know suppose i am having some real estate data okay maybe that uh, real estate uh, manager They are, they are they are getting some customers uh, requirement like this uh, uh, maybe in bangalore okay i want to uh, get these uh, information like some people are uh, want to uh, uh, stay near airport and some maybe want to stay some uh, university near university they want to stay and some people uh, maybe they want to uh, some residential area maybe they have retired and they they want Uh, without any hassle they want to lead their uh, life so in that particular case uh, uh, city of course bangalore and we need to give the area as airport uh, means definitely i have to mention the uh, alahanka area so related to that area only we can get university wise uh, uh, we should mention the area as uh, some other aspect like you know uh if you are making use of the convention of area uh, uh some some maybe uh, banishankari or ashwanpura uh, like that maybe if this, this area is related to universities and all the residential maybe jayanagar or jp nagar something like that so 
Here, though the city is Bangalore, but how do we partition, guys? Just we are partitioning based on the area, so it is it is uh, giving us some sort of uh, accessing the data in the fastest manner. Okay, so yeah. these partitions are really helping us how we are making use of the convention. And now you may feel that uh, is there any difficulty of uh, establishing this kind of the partition because it is really giving some sort of uh, understanding and uh, some sort of. Uh, optimization of course uh, we are uh, by the end of the session we are going to talk about uh, partition proving and dynamic partition also okay so first let me introduce how i create a partition there is a clause called uh, partition by friends actually there is a clause called partitioned by so how do i create uh, just uh, there are uh, certain options a uh, first way of uh, uh, handling this particular thing is uh, usage of the partition by at the time of uh, Table creation. Okay, uh, let us see how do I create. Just I am making use of uh, just create table. Uh, I am creating some student table. Okay, create table student, and we are making use of some data like this uh, university uh, string type, and then we are making use of uh, the uh, subject opted. This is also string, and then name of the student. Okay. Uh, string so like that we are taking now we have not mentioned the uh, partition by now we are mentioning partitioned by okay uh, what i'm doing is i want to partition by university along with the major so now though uh, maybe uh, like this i can say uh, suppose i am having some recruitment and uh, in this particular recruitment, I want to uh, pick up the universities where they are uh, taking the students by from IIT JE. Okay, uh, and uh, the major must be computer science, ECE, or CBE, like this, because that requirement demands uh, that kind of thing. Sometimes maybe guys, uh, uh, this major may be mechanical or civil something like that okay so the point guys here so obviously at the time of creating your table you can observe how i am making use of this partition because if you are not mentioning the partition by obviously your data is going to uh, look into this university and all these kind of the majors and name of the student and all but uh, as a recruitment agency if i want to separate the members if I want to separate the members in such a way that right? I want to pick up the members uh, who are having the university background and uh, the two uh, who are opted uh, that are JE kind of thing. Okay. So now, uh, if you if you observe this kind of convention, it seems like pretty simple. At the time of table creation only you can, uh, but only the point is that you need to have uh, where do I apply this kind of thing and what is my expectation all these kind of the convention this is at the time of table creation and uh, of course uh, there are certain aspects uh, like uh, um, the other way of uh, doing the thing is the second way i'm doing so create table here also we are creating the table so just we are making use of some professor okay just we are making use of the professor and name of that professor okay just i'm having this kind of convention and partition by so just we are uh, making use of the partition by and then uh, uh, here uh, maybe i can take the university name university name string and as well as uh, department okay so department also now uh, here observe guys here. Uh, point is uh, it's not always you know uh, it's not always required to maintain uh, uh, all the information uh, in the table creation. Rather, what you can do is uh, you can mention some of the information at the time of creating the table, and the partition by can be mentioned some other way. Okay, in the earlier case, uh, what we have done, university major and name we have mentioned in the same, and then we partition by some university or major. But now, if you see this professor, just I am making use of this name as a normal kind of thing. And later we are partitioning by the appropriate information. 
come to uh, details and all. Okay, this is the, the way how we are uh, making use of the conventions uh, related to uh, the Orient. Okay, and this is one thing. And maybe uh, how do I use the partitions at the time of insertion? Because the next important uh, part is that only. Uh, so insert option. Okay, suppose you you know that uh, uh, your table is having some uh, partition information and you want to insert some data. Okay, definitely you have to uh, make use of this particular insert option. One minute, guys. Give me a second. Oh, sorry for that, guys. Okay. There is small disturbance. So, so if you are uh, uh, making use of this uh, insert option, uh, how do I make use of that convention? Okay. So, just take it again. So uh, the insert option, how do I manage this particular insertion? Uh, simple. So as we are uh, knowing about uh, the normal convention of the SQL, so how do we do that, guys? Insert uh, into, uh, maybe I'm having the student data, insert into student. Now I need to mention the partition. OK. so. Uh, now, uh, see guys, I want to insert into a particular data related to a university. Maybe I uh, I have recruited some people and I want to convey that information to the university uh, placement officer. Okay, so now what I want to do, university equal to, just I am uh, making use of uh, JNU, JNU Delhi. Okay, and uh, along with that, I just I'm having some other things, major and name. Uh, because again, JNU containing mechanical, civil, triple, all these things. Now I need to mention the major along with the name of the candidate. Okay, uh, and then, um, okay, just you can uh, select the information. Okay, so select major comma name because these two details we have to get from uh, placements okay so the uh, hive if you are familiar guys which is really uh, help helps you in the understanding of the spark because the advantage of that particular hive is uh, uh, just uh, i'm giving a, a glance uh, hive typically the etl kind of the thing Maybe, uh, of course, Hive, though it is belongs to uh, Hadoop ecosystem tool, but still uh, it is supporting uh, uh, both Hadoop distributed file system and, and as well as your local file system. That is the advantage. That means uh, either you can uh, store your data in local file system or else you want to store the data in HDFS. In either way, it is possible. You can access the data from LFS and you can access the data from HDFS. Either way, you can do that. Uh, now, uh, of course, other uh, options are like, uh, as I said, insertions and usage of the partitions or uh, actually the uh, usage of the hive only. Uh, because the, the problem, the uh, advantage here is guys, uh, uh, Spark, uh, why Spark is this much uh, uh, useful and uh, uh, successful is uh, it is uh, running with uh, Hadoop. 
maybe you can use the hdfs map reduce all these things and actually for the sake of certification uh, we are not bothering about the these kind of thing but uh, uh, whenever the time permit definitely i'll use some insights of this combination also guys because we have to know as a data engineer and thereafter it is supporting the sql orientation it supports the high it supports the no sql even it support the streaming in terms of kafka okay that much uh, capability is there and apart from all these things it is having a separate uh, library and uh, of course if any person is having knowledge on scikit learn he can use that also so there are multi dimensions of course we are seeing only the portion of the data engineering that that uh, uh, how we need to restrict ourselves no? so until at least the completion of the certification and once that uh, is over we can discuss many things friends as per your requirement i can coin some courses and we can float across right okay now one more option suppose if i want to uh, based on the partition add and drop of the corresponding partition because after the creation of the partition after inserting the data suppose if you want to uh, i mean uh, perform some kind of the activities related to the partition such as after creation of the table i want to perform some addition of the partition or else i want to perform some sort of uh, dropping of the corresponding partition so for that purpose let us uh, create some table here guys so just we are uh, uh, without any uh, thing like uh, just time having a log file so just so as to maintain the log information create table log file which is containing the date of course we are having a date data type capital i am writing and then uh, id of the log maybe the integer kind of the data and even taken place which is the string maybe ticket raising system or something like that we are uh, creating uh, and and uh, once this particular uh, details are there i want to create this particular log file uh, with the help of the csv okay using csv and i want to pick up the location if you observe the dbfs location guys the location is something like this in our case uh, dbfs colon slash uh, file store slash tables Slash maybe if I want to use some orders log file, I'm using the orders. Okay, this location varies, guys. Maybe if you are using the AWS, this location may be something else. And we are talking about the Databricks uh, uh, file system so that it becomes like this. And if you are working with the Hadoop distributed file system, then the path is uh, distinct. okay so uh, now as we are using this uh, databricks kind of the convention we are using this uh, location and what we are doing is uh, partitioned by date the uh, the log file contents are uh, pretty much but we need to handle them in in the date format only like uh, today how many uh, tickets were there uh, and yesterday how many tickets were received and what is the status something like that okay so this is how you can manage the log file content with the specification guys okay now the point is of course we we pretty know uh, these kind of the conventions uh, in terms of uh, earlier university example and student example but uh, one more option is we can mention the path of the appropriate file also while studying about the Uh, partitions and now the point is uh, how do i add the uh, partition like once i created this but uh, i want to mention the kind of the partition in earlier cases university equal to some nit calicut nit varangal like that we have seen so now in this particular case if i want to add that particular thing there is a, a typical option guys like alter table okay a log whatever the table name i am having just i am writing add partition okay add partition just your uh, date okay so uh, like this i am making use date as the state and uh, uh, maybe uh, if i want to add some more thing accordingly i can add as many as possible so simple 
all the table table name add uh, how you do in the sql friends add co constraint constraint name add uh, add column column name like that and simply if i want to drop the appropriate partition alter table log so just you can use the uh, drop partition okay drop partition just you can mention name of this thing only that particular partition will be deleted without any harm to the other partitions okay this is the way uh, how do you refer this uh, kind of the convention like that you can drop all the partitions also by mentioning the name of the university etc now the extension of this uh, topic is guys let me pull some diagrams i have compiled some aspects for us in the preparation uh, one minute guys okay so uh, actually this particular uh, thing is pretty simple for us like uh, what we are doing is uh, uh, whatever the things we are doing is a static partition actually uh, if you re refer this particular static partition uh, have a look on this diagram guys just uh, if you see uh, this is something like one minute it is not no oh, yeah. yeah so we were the static partition what it does is uh, just we are uh, picking up the details assume that uh, i have created a partition and i want to pick up that uh, uh, data from the partition how do you do that select start from sales where day of week equal to monday we want to pick up the details uh, of uh, monday sales only that uh, maybe saturday sunday we are having heavy sales and monday is there any drop or something uh, we want to analyze Now, what is the basic flow here? Uh, uh, just it is uh, scanning the entire thing, and then it is going to apply the filter. Actually, there is one concept called uh, predicate push. Okay, most important thing, guys. Automatically, while working with your uh, partition kind of thing, you need not explicitly mention this uh, predicate push. Uh, a spark. pushes the, that particular filter because uh, here where and if you remember guys uh, in your the uh, uh, spark where and filter both are same so obviously uh, that monday uh, only the records which are belongs to monday only those particular things will be filtered this is a predicate uh, push down now uh, of course if that particular uh, uh, data is adding the partitions uh, automatically it is giving even more results guys okay this kind of the thing is known as the uh, static partition pruning what do you mean by pruning guys so pruning is a process of um not traversing the unnecessary path suppose uh, if you remember uh, like in your data structures there are certain uh, uh, paths in the tree actually so this is known as the tree pruning tree pruning means uh, suppose if you want to uh, get some kind of the uh, data which is located uh, somewhere here and uh, the algorithm should uh, cut down this particular path because this path lead to access traverse and which automatically incur more time and space requirements actually the topic of this pruning is borrowed from the data structures tree pruning okay binary tree binary search tree avl tree okay many trees would be there in the data structures and our uh, uh, convention here is uh, while processing this particular tree kind of the data structure it is uh, uh, what it is doing is it is cutting down all the unnecessary paths okay that algorithm is saying the tree is having the property by default here also Uh, in your uh, static partitioning, uh, though you are not mentioning the way. Uh, suppose if you are uh, making use of the partition, and your uh, uh, partition is having the nature of the pruning technique. Actually. That is what we call the static partition pruning. This is due to this uh, uh, predicate push down. So predicate here is maybe filter or any condition. Predicate means whatever the condition you want. Uh, based on that particular condition, one can easily uh, perform those actions. okay this is one way and coming to the other option uh, like you know friends uh, just whatever the uh, uh, 
possible problems we are having so just with the help of other conditioning the dynamic uh, partition pruning okay so actually if you are observing the dynamic partition pruning uh, uh, if you are considering the aspect of the dynamic partition pruning which is uh, internally using some sort of uh, mechanism guys but before going to that uh, dynamic partition pruning let me uh, show you uh, some other options like uh, there are two important considerations uh, one is the join approach okay so partition pruning uh, is containing some kind of the join approach uh, where it is uh, allowing us uh, to perform some predicate uh, push down okay pushing down the predicate and and whereas if you are referencing the other condition which is nothing but uh, uh, broadcast join okay so uh, the advantage guys here um, if, if uh, so let me show you with some kind of the a diagram so that we can easily grasp that have a look on this guy just it is uh, giving us uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, table a uh, with person age um, person details and as well as the age this is one approach where you can perform some join operation uh, maybe one table this information is name and age second information is age and marks common field is on age Okay, based on the age, if, he, if they want to allocate some kind of the, uh, sometimes you know, guys, uh, uh, in the entrance examinations and uh, in some uh, in some sort of uh, uh, job uh, selections, age is a key factor. Maybe sometimes 23 years and 24 years guys are applied uh, for the same position. Generally, they should give the priority for the 24 years because this 23 year guy again may be getting the chance of recruitment and all. Okay, so higher age people will be uh, given priority related to that particular condition. But here, uh, if you observe, uh, it is a typical uh, query where one can easily see that uh, uh, all the uh, processing of the data and all these things are considering. Uh, and in joining approach, uh, uh, the processing will take complete data. That means uh, both the partitions. Uh, and though we want to get uh, the people who are... Uh, uh, less than 25 also, even though that partition are not going to part of the join. We, we, we have to get that particular convention. Whereas with the predicate pushing, okay, just if you observe the second uh, possibility, guys, this is the first thing. But whereas in PySpark, if I'm running, this is the way how it is running. Okay, so just it is uh, uh, pushing the predicate and it is applying some filter. So we are uh, uh, filtering, okay, on greater than 25 age. Okay, so uh, the predicate pushing you need not explicitly mention by default. Uh, uh, Spark is having that uh, kind of the approach, and most importantly, guys, um, uh, the most important point before reaching to our uh, dynamic partition, uh, which is nothing but your broadcast uh, hashing. Uh, and if, uh, if you remember, guys, in our uh, optimization technique, I asked you to implement some broadcasting. This is a broadcast variable kind of thing. Uh, when can I apply this particular broadcast is uh, if there is any possibility of the skew or if, if any data is very uh, small and, and if I want to repeat that particular data to all my locations or clusters or executors, then I can make use of this uh, uh, broadcast approach. So the advantage, what is the advantage of that particular broadcast approach is pretty simple. Uh, one of your join table is smaller, okay? Small, uh, Spark itself uh, applies this uh, uh, broadcast hash join uh, so as to uh, limit the appropriate replications and so as to avoid the higher memory and uh, high, higher uh, uh, time uh, usage for the processing of the data. So uh, this time uh, giving you a small uh, definition guys because in the earlier uh, Things also they asked us, what do you mean by this broadcasting is? Just have a look on this, guys. So when one of your join tables is smaller, Spark itself opts for BHA, broadcast has joined, only if threshold memory is under the limit provided. Uh, broadcast has joined works with broadcast has been under the hood. Because uh, if, though I am directly mentioning the uh, broadcasting, okay, there is a process actually for the broadcasting. 
like all the uh, broadcast variables okay will be placed in the uh, executors they need not uh, uh, go and verify back uh, so as to pick up that particular data here also the same convention the process uh, is like this guys suppose if you observe the process uh, have a look on this let us uh, understand this particular approach uh, suppose i am having some sort of the information uh, executor 1 2 3 um uh, there are certain uh, specific convention i need to pick up the column value 2 from a uh, specific uh, table and here also column value 2 and here also column value 2 so how we how this particular executor performs is uh, it is not dumping the entire columns information it is pretty clear in the filtering of the appropriate column and it is going to fetch the data so the point here guys uh, in your uh, partition pruning okay so the partition pruning can be applied in two formats uh, the first one is the predicate push down we have seen earlier okay predicate pushing down second point is broadcast hashing second point is your broadcast hashing okay so uh, whether you are specifying or not specifying based on these two possibilities uh, spark is going to help you uh, to perform the uh, pruning technique okay and as a corollary corollary means as a short uh, principle i want to introduce you the dynamic partition also but uh, dynamic partition guys uh, uh, there are certain uh, uh, points where you can uh, observe the uh, concept of the dynamic partition uh, of course if you are referencing the dynamic partition pruning uh, two options again uh, predicate of the pushing down the predicate and as well as the uh, while using the filters or conditions and second thing is uh, uh, whenever there is a possibility there is a according to the requirement it is uh, making use of uh, uh, broadcast uh, uh, hashing property Uh, uh but how do we refer the dynamic uh, uh, partition property uh j- just we are having some simple uh, narration guys for this uh, just i have compiled for us uh, and directly we are getting some sort of the questionnaire from this so just uh, have a look on the understanding of this thing i'll i'll be giving you some sort of uh, observation here okay simple uh, don't worry uh, because uh, maybe it is looking some Seven to ten lines, but uh, it is pretty simple as compared with uh, the static partition technique. Uh, as discussed earlier, uh, your DPP dynamic partition is implemented based on the above mentioned partition pruning and as well as the broadcast hashing. That's what I introduced this uh, partition pruning and as well as the broadcast uh, hashing after completion of the uh, implementation of uh, partition technique. Now, friends, here uh, one more important thing. Uh, in the etl most co- commonly used terminology is the dimension table fact table okay so dimension uh, from this we are going to get the fact table actually multiple dimensions should be there and maybe uh, i'm having uh, like this uh, dimension 1 dimension 2 dimension 3 and all these uh, kind of the dimensions for fa- form some fact table which is looks like i like some kind of the star this is a star schema like that we are having snowflake schema survey but remember that uh, to apply the dynamic partition the basic requirement is uh, the data must be in the in terms of dimension and fact the dimension of course is a terminology borrowed from uh, data warehousing where your dimensions are uh, the source tables and uh, fact table is the derived one uh, by using those dimension tables we can generate the fact tables now if you refer the second uh, observation these are star schema uh, tables are broadly classified into fact and dimensions mostly where the dimension table is much smaller compared with the fact table because based on the source table we generally uh, integrate with uh, a multiple dimension table we are going to generate the fact table now the important point here guys when joining these tables the dynamic partition pruning creates an internal sub query acquired out of the filter applied on the dimension table broadcast it just now we have seen this broadcast it 
and makes a hash table out of it and internally applies to the physical plan of the fact table before the scanning phase. Actually, guys, uh, uh, if you uh, remember the point of uh, discussion, like DAG, okay, directed uh, acyclic graph, where uh, there are certain uh, uh, logical and as well as the physical plans. Okay, so uh, even uh, sometimes we have seen that uh, executors and uh, job ID, with the job ID, you can see the environment, SQL, and all these stages information, task, all those things. So your physical plan, okay, is uh, internally managed by this uh, dynamic partition pooling. What, what, what is the way, how we do, how it is, how it is performing is, uh, the dynamic partition pooling happens, spark forms an inner subquery from the dimension table, of course, which is broadcasted and hashed across all the executors. Executors are nothing but, uh, uh, if you remember guys, in our uh, uh, Spark architecture, we have spent some time you know, to understand the executors. The executors can consist of these slots, and these executors are having direct communication with the Spark driver, and driver assigns the appropriate uh, task to the executors. Based on the availability of the slots, uh, those slots are converted into the tasks. So uh, what happens is this dimension tables are broadcasted and hashed across all the executors. And this subquery is uh, meant for pruning out unwanted partitions from the fact table, which is carried out in the uh, scanning phase. That means uh, uh, whatever the fact table, just we are uh, managing all these dimension tables as a broadcasting kind of thing. Whenever there is no requirement of a particular column related to a corresponding dimension table, they will be pruned. So at the end of this operation, fact table is only getting, okay, only getting the required data. This is all performed Spark, performed by Spark internally, guys. Even we don't know how it is performing, okay? Because from Spark 3.0, we are having this uh, dynamic partition pooling because they face so many things. Like you know, one simple example I I will give. Uh, suppose if I want to uh, understand some five years data of a particular uh, experiment. experiment. That experiment uh, is nothing but uh, in IIT Madras, uh, in blockchain, okay, from 2010 to 2023, uh, what is the uh, uh, unidentified research? Identified research means it, it should have some uh, uh, I mean, weightage may be recognized by some bank, banking sector, private or public. Maybe it, it has proven as an excellent uh, uh, security technique. Okay. Now you see, guys, in the in 2010 to 2023, only 2010 to 2012. That means only two years. Okay, out of this. Uh, um, 13 years or 13 years. Okay, just only first two years are uh, having the high impact. Remaining things are, of course, they are publishing the articles and there is no notable research actually. So it, it happens like everywhere, guys. Maybe if I'm running some 10 years data or 20 years data, maybe two months data may be skewed or two months are having high returns or uh, high impact on the entire uh, table. So in such situations, you know, guys, just you are uh, making use of the pruning of unwanted partitions from the fact table, okay, which is carried out in the scanning phase. Because practically, if I'm seeing also, I may not know, okay. But whereas at the moment you see, just the uh, with the help of the coding and with the help of the uh, corresponding logic, Spark could able to filter these unnecessary kind of the informations, okay. And apart from that. Uh, a subquery is formed from the dimension table and of course it broadcast to apply broadcast hashing and it is then applied to the fact table in its scanning phase so that it doesn't carry any irrelevant data to the join phase because after filtering only we are reaching to this fact table because in the all ETL process what it does is it is going and asking all the dimensions and uh, uh, in fact, the join operation is the most expensive operation guys. no matter whether in SQL or uh, ETL also the same problem. But the Spark wisely handles that particular problem by converting that into the broadcast kind of the join. 
okay so broadcast that and there are certain limitations case actually this is most important thing because we some two or three times we got these kind of the questions in the earlier things uh, which all which are all the phases where we cannot apply the dpt dynamic partition technique first thing is uh, it doesn't need any additional configuration to be set in the config sometimes they ask dpp requires the following configuration okay it is not practically required any explicit configuration sense and moreover tables that need to be pruned okay must be partitioned with any uh, one of the join key column this is the best uh, point guys because uh, suppose if i want to prune uh, university uh, column my table must contain the university column see they, this is a understood point na because we, without that uh, uh, whatever the column i want to prune definitely the column must reflect in the original table okay and it works only with if we joins this is a major barrier guys actually they are still trying but of course uh, uh, this is the best uh, uh, i mean uh, maybe uh, frequently asked the question uh, can i apply join with not equal to can i apply join like that they are asking so it only works with equi join kind of things and it's best suited for the queries that follow the start schema and one more restriction guys because uh, your your entire dpp process uh, the dynamic partition process is uh, uh, absorbed with uh, dimension and as well as the fact tables okay actually these terminology we borrowed from the concept of the data warehouse okay and this data warehouse is well known for etl olap oltp etc so etl of course as i said earlier extraction transformation and loading with the help of some sort of the transformations one can easily apply the logic but an online analytical processing is something like uh, uh, which is uh, generation of the reports and uh, all these kind of thing online transaction processing clerical or day to day kind of the fielding of the data is considered category as oltp okay so and uh, uh, and ma major important aspect guys your schema okay so star schema snowflake star snowflake and fact constellation constellation okay so here star schema just now we have seen fact table and we will be having some different uh, dimension table that is fine this star looks like uh, star schema snowflake in the sense guys uh, uh, there is a concept called uh, denormalization <laughs> we are favorite for the normalization but, the, but we are the, having that concept of denormalization also so suppose on the dimensions if there is any possibility of denormalization okay then that comes under the category of the snowflake dimensions and uh, some internal aspect generally there is only one fact we are having in star and snowflake but uh, whereas fact constellation uh, if i am having multiple fact tables okay in the appropriate uh, specification then that is a fact constellation in general okay so while working with uh, data warehousing etl process uh, we are having uh, uh, one fact table and multiple dimension table but at times you know there are certain cases where we are having the multiple fact table also that uh, comes under the category of the fact constellation but your uh, dpp can be applicable only for star schema okay remember these points guys okay so this is what uh, you can observe the predicate uh, push down and as well as the broadcast hash join and these two things uh, can really helps in static partition understanding and before advent of your uh, park 3.0 uh, these things really helped us actually pa predicate pushing and all these kind of thing but uh, in uh, dynamic partition pruning uh, with the advantage of this uh, uh, predicate push down and as well as the uh specification of this particular uh, uh whatever the broadcast has joined we have seen uh, just these two are the major uh, observations in the dynamic partition but uh, there are certain restrictions the limitations where we are getting some questionnaire from those kind of the limitations uh, just have a look okay so uh, the partition must be there 
and with uh, equi-join only they are working and it is best suited for the queries uh, that follow the star scheme, star scheme architecture model. And if you are not aware of uh, fact and dimensions, uh, just to go through, uh, I'll, I'll share some uh, material related to that thing friends along with this uh, thing because uh, pretty uh, straightforward. A dimension is a source table, fact is a derived table from those dimensions. And uh, uh, data warehousing is the ETL kind of the tool where uh, different source data can be taken and uh, extracted the required data, transform according to the user requirements and it is going to load the uh, appropriate data. Okay, on top of these kind of the conventions, you can uh, uh, understand the partition. Two, two, three questions we are getting from this direction also, guys. Right? Okay, so that's all for uh, today's session. Any doubts, please let me know. Uh, hi, Dr. Pawan, Himanshu, this slide. Yeah, uh, I don't have doubt, just want, like, can we have a something, uh, uh, a real time case study as well? Mm, uh, related to this, na, uh, yes, 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 yes. Mm. Uh, do you want to uh, share the details or uh, any discussion I need to scope? What is the, what is your expectation? Uh, uh, any, any, like if you can showcase few things, like how we really mm. do in the data mm. breaks, that will be really helpful. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then I'll, I have collected something for you. I thought of sharing and uh, if it is really helps you, let me show you that if I can. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. I'm having that in fact. Maybe if you ask me the real time case study. Because Databricks itself has uh, given that uh, case study. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, they let me. Because these, these guys, uh, I really picked the appropriate information from the Databricks seminar only. Uh, here, uh, it is a query demand. So they executed. Actually, this particular query gives us uh, the working of the uh, dynamic uh, uh, partition pruning. Okay. So, uh, though, uh, if you see this kind of thing, actually, this is typical uh, SQL orientation only. But you know, okay. at this moment, uh, they are uh, making use of uh, uh, select class along with this partition, and uh, they are making use of these uh, uh, information, table information, and mm -hmm. where uh, just there, uh, there, uh, there is a typical query and. Uh, of course, in your case, it may not be typical because you usually write uh, complex queries. But uh, this is the one they have taken actually, group by and order by. Let me show you the result they got because it is uh, quite interesting actually. When I felt very, uh, if you refer this thing, as I have given one example, na, like uh, um, in, in specific cases, only two months data is playing a skew kind of thing. Here also they observed that uh, uh, only uh, this uh, DPP with the DPP they could able to execute this uh, thing uh, and default is uh, because uh, without any filter this default querying is span over to all these uh, records runtime actually but DPP closed this uh, uh, appropriate query execution within the uh, limited amount of the time that means only it it could able to uh, eradicate that means uh, actually this uh, default query uh, without DPP it needs to stop here only because this is unnecessary data the okay. data is not required okay but still it is not having the capability of the DPP non DPP kind of thing so obviously it is uh, uh, it is span over to run all the way but with the help of this uh, dynamic uh, partition pruning of course internally it is using the uh, predicate push down okay and uh, as well as uh, the second option is uh, broadcast has joined okay with the t and and apart from that guys because definitely we need to use the partitions that is at the outset partition we have to use and on top of that uh, this dpp provides the predicate uh, push down and as well as the broadcast but uh, if you are not using this uh, uh, pi spark other than that, if you are going with any SQL or any other kind of the ETL uh, processing, they are not having this convention of the DPP actually, dynamic uh, partition pruning. So they 
they could not filter out the appropriate required records and the data is span over to these many uh, minutes okay so at okay. least nanoseconds okay na that is and and uh, you can run this uh, himan to, to require so and you can uh, directly maybe you can get the information of uh, store sales and item from the database i'll share the link also where they where they have given all the details of course almost 80 to 90 percent who have discussed only the thing is a few other points maybe some comparisons uh, like let me post one more option uh, this particular option has uh, given us uh, uh, how these uh, conventions are uh, helping us in uh, in all the aspects one minute one diagram i picked up from us for us um, actually optimization opportunities and then uh, simple approach uh, broadcast join approach uh, okay so just a minute okay i can able to give you this this is a normal convention because that seminar itself is very good so i picked up the details from that only a simple approach where uh, handling of the data and then uh, as per our uh, broadcast has joined how they could uh, perform the activity so this is the approach so this is the first thing actually fact table and as well as the dimension table processing uh, duplication and as well as the heuristic uh, actually guys heuristic is a searching technique actually but uh, without this uh, Uh, broadcast has an applicability that heuristic may be giving the inaccurate results that is one thing and your broadcast has join is something like uh, uh, which we have discussed like any uh, dimension table is uh, uh, filtering filtered by spark and only uh, filtered records will be given to the fact table which is a great uh, deal with uh, dynamic partition and moreover uh in the in the etl cost in start schema orientation dimension and fact in these cases only your uh, uh, dynamic partition uh, dynamic pruning partition is uh, very helpful okay so that is one convention apart from that uh, himanshu if you need any uh, additional uh, requirements uh, please please ping me so that uh, i can post in that okay but this is a pretty good topic guys pretty good not only for the certification but in your uh, uh, day to day usage also uh, you can make use of this uh, convention as well okay right very good let's all any other doubts then nice nice study no very good himanshu uh, let me pick up uh, some more uh, topics uh, towards to the certification at the same time learning so really helps you to Okay, clarify the things. Okay, so that's all. We are all okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank See you. you yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.